Today I'd like to continue our journey through the book of Deuteronomy uh, and uh, take a look at chapter 6 of that amazing book, uh, the last book of the Pentateuch, the great five books, the Torah of the Hebrew Scriptures. Uh, in chapter 6 we uh, are introduced to the Shema, the uh, Hebrew word for hear, uh, which has become the famous echo uh, of the Hebrew Scriptures and also of the Christian Scriptures. Jesus repeats this uh, in the Christian Scriptures. Uh, verse 4 of chapter 6 says, The Lord is your God. So the idea that God is special, <laughs> God has a special, wonderful relationship with the people. God loves the people in just a wonderful, wonderful way. And he is in this wonderful relationship with the people. So the Lord is your God, and you shall love the God. Uh, you shall uh, love the Lord, in verse 5. Uh, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your strength. Uh, Jesus sums this up as the two commandments, to love God and to love our neighbor. But it's interesting how it is phrased in um, chapter 6, verse 5. Uh, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. There's a sense of completeness. Completely give yourself to God, all your heart, with all your soul, with everything that you have, with all your strength. So it's the idea of being totally devoted to God, giving yourself completely to God, holding nothing back. Uh, and the uh, words become so important that uh, Moses says, drill these words into your children. Make sure that your children know these words as well. These words become so special. Uh, bind these words to your wrist as a sign so that you always have them with you. Bind them to your wrist. And they were the phylacteries that were put on the left arm. Uh, let them be a pendant to your forehead. So again, attached to the forehead, attached to the arm. These words, the Shema, are so important uh, to the people because they express really who the people are in relationship to God. And so this is why they have achieved this special importance. Uh, also write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So we have that uh, custom of the mezuzah placed on the right hand outer door jam. The idea that as you left your house, you would see those words and acknowledge them. And then as you returned again into the house, you would acknowledge that you must love God and love your neighbor uh, and, and completely devoted to God. The importance of following the commandments is emphasized and also the role of God in leading the Israelites out of their slavery in Egypt. So the commandments are important, as we've seen in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, particularly in chapter 5 when they are listed. Uh, but they are important really throughout the history of the people that you are following these commandments. Uh, and also, as we follow the commandments, kind of parallel with that, to remember that the role that God had in leading the people out of Egypt, leading the people to freedom. So God has given the commandments as a really a help to us, as a guide to us, so we know what to follow, what is right, what is wrong. But also to remember that God is not just a God who gives commandments, but God is someone who is actively involved in our lives to lead us to freedom. God leads us certainly to freedom from uh, moral danger through the commandments. But God leads us even to a deeper freedom, a freedom of uh, embracing him completely in relationship. A uh, freedom of giving ourselves to God so God then can give God to us. It is a mutuality. It is our giving but it is first initiated by God's giving, God calling the people, God calling Abraham, uh, and God calling all of us to follow the ways of God by acknowledging God, certainly, but also, very importantly, taking that acknowledgement to our brothers, to our sisters, to our neighbors, to all in the community. Uh, the liturgical character of the book of Deuteronomy is very evident. Uh, the emphasis on uh, anamesis or zakharon, recalling the actualizing 
uh, uh, the saving events of the Exodus and Covenant. So this amnesis is to remember them, but also it is a living memory. Uh, it's not the God of long ago. God is still with us. God is still leading us. We are still in relationship with God. God loves us. What God had done in the past, God is still doing now. He is still leading us to freedom. He's still giving us guidance. He's still helping us. He is God is still there with us uh, on our journey. Uh, and the importance really for the people of recalling this period in the desert. This period in the desert can seem to some people like, gee, they've, you know, they've been in the desert a long time. Uh, what's happening here? But it's kind of a way of preparing the people to listen to God in an even deeper way, to realize their dependence on God, uh, to realize that God is faithful with God's love, that God will be there, uh, and to realize the importance of us giving ourselves to God. Uh, the fear that is mentioned uh, frequently we see this this idea of this fear of God. This fear really refers to a religious reverence that is expressed in worship. So the fear is not a paralyzing fear that, you know, the, you know uh, God is going to come after us and we've got to be afraid. But it's this idea of uh, we are aware of God. We are aware of God's care for us. We are aware that God wants to come to us, be part of our lives. And so we have a certain reverence when it comes to God. Uh, and this reverence naturally leads us to worship God because we realize all of the many blessings that God has given to us. And so we have this sense of this willingness and this joy in giving worship to God. Uh, in chapter 7, we learn now that God will help the Israelites destroy the seven nations that occupy the land. And these nations are depicted as more numerous than the Israelites. So it would seem at first that, gee, <laughs> things aren't going to go well for us. We're outnumbered. Uh, but God says, don't worry. I will be there for you. I will take care uh, of you. I will help you as you uh, battle against these nations to establish this land for yourself and to establish your place in this land. Uh, it talks about the Israelites dooming them and destroying all their idols and sacred poles. Uh, they should not intermarry with them, because that will lead to the Israelites turning away from God. So the idea of this dooming, it was the custom of the time when one conquered a town to completely destroy it and uh, to destroy the people. Uh, this was the, the concept. Now we look at it today and we say, hmm, this doesn't sound too good to us, this idea of this dooming. Uh, it seems too radical. Uh, but I guess the idea in that time was if they were some people that were survivors, you know, again, keeping them captive, how would that work? Uh, but this idea of eliminating all of the people, uh, it, it seems kind of a bit extreme to us today, certainly. Uh, destroying their idols, the idea is that there's only one God to worship, so all of those idols would be destroyed. And again, as part of the capturing process, this would happen. Uh, the idols would be destroyed. They would destroy their sacred poles. Uh, and of course, the women and children would be left. Uh, and the temptation, of course, would be to intermarry with some of those women. Uh, the uh, scriptures always kind of take us away from this idea of intermarrying because the idea that would weaken the faith. If the Israelites would intermarry with some of these different tribes and uh, get to be one with them and, and the different family members, uh, this could create some sort of difficulty in terms of, well, maybe these wives would want you to worship their gods and goddesses. So intermarriage was kind of strictly really forbidden. Uh, and next time we'll journey a little bit further into the book of Deuteronomy. God bless.